Hey guys. This video, I'm going to talk about uh, bleed down resistors for motor start capacitors, why it's important to have them, and how you go about choosing one. Now, in a motor circuit where you have start capacitors built in, you generally only have the capacitor in the circuit for a very brief period of time while the motor is coming up to speed. Once the motor comes up to speed, the capacitor is no longer needed to generate the rotational torque to get the motor spinning, and so there will be a centrifugal switch or possibly a voltage sensing relay that will pull the capacitor out of the circuit. Now, with AC current, and in the US here we have 60 hertz AC power, um, you have a voltage that is varying in time from zero to negative 240, back to zero, positive 240, and back to zero again. That is one cycle. 60 hertz, which means 60 cycles per second, means that that voltage is switching negative, positive, and back to zero 60 times per second. Now, since the motor is going to start up and then pull the, uh, the capacitor out of the circuit when it's done, you can't predict where in the waveform that pullout is going to happen. Ideally, it would happen at the zero voltage potential crossing because then there'd be zero volts on the capacitor and you wouldn't have to worry about any extra charge being stored in here. However, since you can't predict it, it's possible that this could occur at positive 240 volts or negative 240 volts and when it pulls out and that potential is there, it becomes stored in your capacitors as DC voltage. So for example here, I've got this capacitor, it does not have a start resistor attached to it. I'm going to momentarily energize this on 240 volts AC. And I'll show you on the meter here, if I set it to DC current, or DC voltage measurement, excuse me, uh, 70 volts stuck on there. So we cut it out at the 70 volt mark. So that's not a whole lot, but that still could be dangerous. Now, if I go ahead and take my bleed down resistor and attach that cross there, make sure there's no voltage left. And in a permitted installation, you'd want to make sure that these either have crimp terminals on them or are soldered securely because you don't want a loose connection on there because you think your bleed down resistor is in the circuit and it's not and you go to touch it, that could be very, very hazardous for you. So I'm just going to twist these onto these terminals here like so. Get a good connection. And now this time when I energize it, just briefly, take the DC voltmeter and measure across there. It's already down and you can see the voltage drops. And that's because this resistor here is bleeding it off. It's also getting a little warm. This is a 5 watt resistor. This is a fairly low, uh, low rating. This is a 5,000 ohm 5 watt resistor. This will bleed this capacitor down very quickly. Now, generally, we recommend going with a much larger value resistor, but in a smaller wattage. So your bleed down may take a couple of seconds, but you're not going to be dissipating huge amounts of heat into your enclosure and possibly, you know, damaging your wiring or something along those lines. If you have any other questions, go ahead and uh, give us a call. Area code is 510-403-4061. Also now, we have our Facebook page up, and there will be a link down there to, to uh, like us on Facebook and favorite us. We ask that you, that you uh, do that there. And uh, shoot us your comments if you have any questions, comments, anything, whether it be capacitors, motors, phase converters, pretty much any of the products we sell if you go to our website and take a look. If you have a question about any of them, ask them on Facebook, ask them in the comments down here, and I'd be just absolutely delighted to go ahead and get back to you with a response on those. Alrighty, until next time guys.